Welcome to the video on camera electronics. This is the circuitry that sets between the image sensor and the output interface. These electronics control special features of the camera. As you work in machine vision, you will certainly use some of these features often and others on occasion. Most features are programmable. Modern cameras often have over 100 different parameters that can be programmed. Some of these features are found in almost all cameras. Others are unique to just one or a few cameras. This video covers just six of the most common features you will likely use. The features that we will cover are gain, black level, gamma, blemish correction, region of interest or ROI, and binning. Gain, also called contrast, is applied to the camera's image data. Usually the gain starts at 1 and increases to some maximum value. In some cameras, gain is controlled in decibels, or 20 times the logarithm of the output divided by the input. For these systems, a value of 0 equals 1, as the logarithm of 1 is 0. It really doesn't matter which way your camera controls gain as long as you know your camera's method. It might seem like gain is a very convenient way to deal with images that do not use the camera's full dynamic range. However, when signal is amplified, the noise is also amplified. Image quality, which is largely a function of the signal-to-noise ratio, is not improved. Still, there are times often for the purposes of display and sometimes for image processing, when adding gain is a benefit to a machine vision application. Here we have a simple test setup with the camera imaging a grayscale test card. Here's the image from the camera. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to close down the lens aperture until the image is very dim. Now I'll add gain to the camera to bring the image back up to nearly full dynamic range. You can see the noise that was not originally evident when the camera's exposure was set appropriately. Black level, also called brightness, adds or subtracts a constant from the image data. Usually black level is set with the lens covered, so the absolute darkness gives an image level just equal to zero. Sometimes, though, if the darkest areas of an image are somewhat bright, the black level is adjusted to make those areas near zero. This is our demonstration setup again. Here's the image of the grayscale test card. You can also see the grayscale histogram. Notice that there are peaks corresponding to each gray level in the target. By changing the black level, we shift the peaks up or down in gray level, but do not change the spacing of the peaks. There's a common camera parameter, gamma, that mystifies a lot of people, but really it's quite straightforward. Suppose you have an input, shown here as I. Also suppose you have a processing circuit with a gamma that has an output O then O is proportional to I raised to the gamma power. In machine vision work, we almost always want our camera's gamma to be 1, so that the image data is proportional to the light falling on the image sensor. When we have a camera connected to a monitor, both the camera and the monitor have a gamma. The combined gamma is just the two gammas multiplied together. Modern monitors commonly have a gamma of 2.4, signal in to light out. That requires the camera to have a gamma around 0.45, so that the light out of the monitor is proportional to the light incident on the image sensor. Here is our demo again. The gamma is set to 1, as is normal in machine vision. In the grayscale histogram, the peaks are evenly spaced. I'll change the gamma to 0.45. Notice the change in the image and the grayscale histogram. 
the peaks are not evenly spaced. In the darker regions, they are more spread out, while in the brighter regions, the peaks are more closely packed together. I'll change the gamma to 2.4. Notice how that changes the spacing of the grayscale peaks. Although not widely publicized, image sensors have blemishes, individual pixels or groups of pixels that do not respond the same as other pixels. Mostly these are pixels that are stuck on, always bright, or stuck off, always dark. However, a blemish is usually identified as any pixel that differs by more than 10% from its neighboring pixels when the image sensor is uniformly illuminated. Each image sensor manufacturer has their own blemish specification. By special order, image sensors are selected to have fewer blemishes or even no blemishes at all. Of course, these image sensors are more expensive and raise the cost of the camera. The good news, lower resolution image sensors such as VGA with 640 by 480 pixels often come with no blemishes at all. Higher resolution sensors such as five megapixel sensors that are common in machine vision today almost always have some blemishes. Blemishes are usually specified as single pixels, groups or clusters of pixels, or a line, usually a column. You are probably asking questions like, how do I know or find out what blemishes the camera's image sensor has? What does the camera do about blemishes? What effect does a blemish have on my machine vision application? These are all good questions and we'll try to answer each one. Cameras usually contain a table of blemishes determined by tests on the image sensor installed in the camera. The table comes programmed from the factory. Although the user is often able to change this table, that is not advisable unless you know in detail what the camera does to compensate for blemishes. Cameras often compensate for a blemish by using the values of surrounding pixels. The simplest scheme is to hold the value of the last valid pixel until the readout is past the blemish. If the method the camera uses to deal with blemishes is important to you, you need to have a technical talk with the camera's manufacturer. So what is the impact of a blemish or blemishes on the operation of a machine vision system? If your application is determining the presence or absence of something, reading a code, performing optical character recognition or verification, recognizing a part, or determining a part's location, then the impact of blemishes is probably negligible. If your application is making extremely precise measurements, then blemishes might affect the precision you can obtain. Common measurement algorithms use a large span of pixels to make a measurement, so the impact on precision is usually fairly small. If your application is finding very small defects, then it is possible blemishes could affect the reliability of detecting defects. For this reason, it is wise to have more pixels spanning the defect than the bare minimum. These extra pixels may necessitate a camera with higher image resolution. What if your camera has more pixels than you need? This is very often the case since we are limited in choices of image resolution. Assume you have determined the image resolution you need you cannot choose a camera with lower image resolution because the performance of the vision system will not meet your requirements. So you are forced to pick a camera with a higher image resolution than you need. Given that circumstance, there are some choices to make. One choice is to fit the camera's image to the required field of view. This works, but it becomes necessary to transmit and process more image data than needed to achieve satisfactory performance. The speed of the vision system suffers. 
Another choice is to keep the whole camera's image, including pixels outside the needed field of view. Again, there is more image transmission and processing time that reduces the vision system speed. There is also the possibility that extraneous image artifacts outside the needed field of view will cause problems for image processing. Perhaps the best choice is to use the camera's ability to implement a region of interest or ROI. Setting the ROI in a camera is different for CCD and CMOS sensors. For CCD, the technique is selective readout. That is, you can select the rows to read out and transmit, but you must read out all columns in every row selected. In CMOS, you can specify the selected rows and columns to get a rectangular ROI in the size and location you want. Our final topic is binning. Binning allows you to electrically combine pixels on the image sensor to effectively make larger pixels. The effective number of pixels is reduced by binning. For example, the image sensor could be binned one by two. That is, the columns stay the same, but adjacent rows are combined. Another option is two by one, where adjacent columns are combined, but the rows stay the same. More commonly, binning is two by two, which combines four adjacent pixels to make a larger pixel. Three by three binning and four by four binning are also possible. So why use binning? There are a few answers to that question. The first answer is that it trades off increased sensitivity for a reduced number of pixels. Another answer is that it allows you to standardize on a higher resolution camera but reduce the resolution to what is needed by your application. This speeds up the vision system. Still, a third answer is that it reduces noise. In the video that follows this one, we'll talk more about noise. Let's review what we've covered in this video about a few of the major options you can program in your camera. Gain that can be used to increase the apparent dynamic range but really doesn't improve the image quality for machine vision. Black level that can adjust the darker regions to better utilize the camera's dynamic range. Gamma that affects how the camera's output responds to the light on the image sensor. Normally we leave the gamma set to one. Blemishes, what they are and what the camera does to compensate or cover up the blemishes and how they might or might not affect your application. Region of interest, or ROI, and how it can help improve the performance of the vision system. And finally, binning, which you can use to improve the sensitivity or reduce the noise at the expense of image resolution. Your camera has maybe a hundred or more other programmable features. You need to study these to determine what might help you make a better vision system. Now you are ready to watch the next video on understanding and handling noise in cameras.